The attacker came within a metre of the prince, the New South Wales Premier, among those who grabbed him. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at 10 assassination attempts caught on camera. The attack happened in full view of an audience. There was panic and confusion as Sir Salman Rushdie lay injured on the stage after being stabbed. For this list, we're exploring unsuccessful attempts on the lives of high-profile figures throughout history that were captured on tape. Which of these assassination bids was the most shocking to you? Let us know in the comments. Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner. Unaware of the danger, the vice president speaks to supporters, then sees a gun in her face. Had Argentine vice president Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner looked up, she would have been staring right down the barrel of a gun. On September 1, 2022, Fernandez de Kirchner was returning to her home where protesters and counter-protesters were demonstrating. From 2007 to 2015, she served as president and faced several corruption scandals, with one trial ongoing, prompting the demonstrations outside her residence. As she signed books, 35-year-old Fernando Andres Sabag Montiel held a semi-automatic pistol inches from her face and pulled the trigger. Christina is alive because, for a reason not technically confirmed, the gun, which contained five bullets, did not fire despite the trigger having been pulled. Despite being loaded, the gun didn't fire. He was arrested on the scene. Investigations revealed that he followed a number of occult and hate groups online. Why that trigger was pulled could be related to a court case which drew these crowds. A show of support for Kirshner, who's embroiled in a corruption case accused of defrauding the state and diverting public funds while president between 2007 and 2015. Hamid Karzai. The army was supposed to display their military might during the annual parade. Instead, it turned into the latest example of its fragility and that of the country. Throughout his tenure as the president of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai found himself the target of several failed assassination attempts. Probably the most widely reported one occurred on April 27, 2008, when alleged Taliban insurgents stormed a military parade and attacked Karzai. Chaos erupted after gunshots were heard nearby where the festivities were taking place. The militants fired gunshots and rockets while the national anthem was being sung at the live televised event. Although Karzai survived the attack and was taken away from the venue, three other people, including an Afghan lawmaker and a young girl, lost their lives in the process. Karzai appeared on live TV soon after the attack, reassuring his citizens that he was alive and well. Karzai urged the nation to remain calm. There had been three earlier assassination attempts on Karzai since he took power in Afghanistan six years ago. Ahmed Dogan, the leader of Bulgaria's Movement for Rights and Freedoms Party, came face to face with what he must have thought was certain death on January 19, 2013. When Dogan was giving a speech at a televised conference in the capital city of Sofia, 25-year-old Okte Eni Mehmedov climbed onto the stage and fired a gun at him. However, the gun misfired, and also it was just a gas pistol, which would have caused non-lethal injuries had it fired properly. This misfire gave Dogan enough time to quickly wrestle it away from any Mehmedov before he was pounced upon by security guards and other officials. George Wallace. Arthur Bremer, standing close to the stage, asked one of the men guarding Wallace, could you get George to come down and shake hands with me? In 1972, the then governor of Alabama kicked off his third campaign for the seat of the president. Unlike his first two tries, Wallace's chances seemed to be much better the third time around, having already won the primary election in Florida. While campaigning in Laurel, Maryland, Wallace was shot five times by Arthur Bremer. And then all of a sudden I heard dot, 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 dot. And then time just stood still. Bremer had initially planned to assassinate Richard Nixon, but upon seeing how difficult that would have been, he opted for Wallace instead. The highly controversial governor survived the attack, but as one of the bullets hit his spinal cord, he was paralyzed from the waist down. Wallace's shooting and his subsequent recovery period brought his third presidential bid to an unfortunate end. Wallace, by the mid-1960s, was certainly aware that he was a figure in danger. Imelda Marcos. 
Imelda Marcos served as the First Lady of the Philippines for 21 years. In that period, she was known for organizing extravagant parties and lavish public events. During one such event, a national beautification and cleanliness contest in 1972, Marcos was attacked by a man holding a bolo knife. The assailant, Carlito Dimahilig, got on stage while Marcos presented awards to winners of the contest and lunged at her with a knife. From his left coat sleeve, he pulled a big bolo, the knife used by peasants in the Philippines, and lunged at Mrs. Marcos. The first lady was quick enough to protect her chest, but she suffered cuts on her hands and arms that required over 70 stitches. While Marcos survived the incident, her attacker wasn't so lucky. Dimahilig was sent to an early grave by security guards who put two bullets in his back. Her attacker lies dead or dying where he fell. Donald Trump. Last year, when Donald Trump was giving a speech, that's when a group of Metro officers saw a man rush up to one of them and then try to grab his gun out of a holster. They were able to quickly stop him, and they didn't find out Thank until you. later this was a premeditated assassination attempt. On June 18, 2016, then-presumptive Republican nominee for President Donald Trump gave a speech at a campaign rally in the Treasure Island Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. The hall was packed full of more than a thousand Trump supporters, but also present was Michael Stephen Sanford, a British citizen. Sanford had traveled all the way from the UK with the intention of assassinating Donald Trump. And what about, I mean, was he politically motivated? He had never mentioned politics to me or his father in his his entire life, or to anyone as far as I know. During the rally, Sanford walked up to one of the police officers working as security and attempted to take his gun from the holster. He was swiftly arrested by the officer and taken into custody, where he revealed that his goal was to stop Trump from ever becoming president. Uh, they say they also found out later that if those Metro officers hadn't stopped that man, he allegedly told Secret Service he was planning a similar attack later on. Pope John Paul II. Suddenly, shots from the crowd. According to eyewitnesses, the Pope froze in shock for a second and then slumped to the seat of his Jeep. As one of the most influential figures in the world, the Pope is usually greeted by crowds whenever he's in public. Such gatherings provide the perfect opportunity for anyone with sinister plans. Just like Pope Paul VI was nearly assassinated in the Philippines, Pope John Paul II faced the same fate at St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. As the Pope entered the square, Mehmet Ali Aja rained bullets on him, striking him four times and leaving him seriously hurt. A lot of uh, uh, screaming and yelling uh, going on, with uh, the police apparently uh, uh, capturing a gunman or someone uh, uh, very near the scene. The Pope was immediately rushed to the hospital, where he was operated on for five hours. Aja fled the scene but was soon apprehended. He was sentenced to life imprisonment, but received a pardon after the Pope forgave him. Young Turk remains something of a mystery. Described as a right-wing extremist by Turkish authorities, he's told Italian police he is a pro-Palestine communist comrade. George W. Bush. Now across the Caucasus and Central Asia and the broader Middle East, we see this same desire for liberty burning in the hearts of young people. They are demanding their freedom and they will have it. During his presidency, George W. Bush was the target of more than one assassination attempt, both at home and abroad. While on a visit to Georgia, Bush appeared together with then-Georgian president Mikhail Saakashvili at the Freedom Square in Tbilisi. Vladimir Arutyunian, a Georgian citizen, threw a hand grenade wrapped in a red tartan handkerchief towards the stage where Bush was speaking from. The grenade landed about 65 feet away from the podium and failed to detonate because it had been wrapped too tightly with the handkerchief. It was quickly discarded by a security officer, and Bush wasn't even aware of the attempt on his life until he had gotten off the stage. On behalf of all Americans, thank you. God bless you. Sarkard Velos Garmajos. Prince Charles. It was the moment we thought would never happen in the lucky country. In 1994, Charles, Prince of Wales, gave an Australia Day speech in Sydney while on a royal tour of the country. Charles had been invited up to speak when two gunshots were heard in the distance and a man lunged at him. The man, 23-year-old David Kang, fired a starting pistol at the prince to draw attention to the plight of Cambodian asylum seekers who were being detained in Australia. Kang got only a few feet away from Charles before his trip was cut short by police officers who pounced on him. Astonishingly, Prince Charles maintained an extraordinary sense of calm throughout the ordeal, only moving when he was shielded by his bodyguard. 
everyone was stunned that someone could actually get from the crowd and to the stage because it's fine now to say, yes, he only had a starter pistol. We didn't know that at the time. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Ronald Reagan. I was just totally depressed, totally despairing of my life. I thought I had no know where to turn. I had become totally estranged from my family. That was the worst part of it. Barely two months into his presidency, Ronald Reagan was shot at in Washington, D.C. as he walked out of the Hilton Hotel. President Reagan had just given a speech to labor union officials and was making his way back to his limousine when John Hinckley Jr. fired six shots at him. Hinckley had developed an obsession with Jodie Foster after seeing the film Taxi Driver. <laughs> I don't know who's weirder, you or me. He believed that assassinating the president would help him gain the attention and interest of the young actress. Although Reagan was critically injured by one of the bullets, he made a full recovery and was released from the hospital less than a month later. The old uh, saying that, you know, Secret Service agent will take a bullet for the president. If you look at the, the Reagan assassination, Tim McCarthy did do that, uh, but he was trained to do that as well. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.